And fans, I had a chance to talk with someone special in the Plymouth State football community and Tony Mann, who is one of the founders of the Plymouth State football gridiron club. And I talked to him earlier this morning about really what it means to be part of the legacy and the history going forward here at Plymouth State. Tony, a lot of history here at Plymouth State. First, you're a member of the gridiron club. Talk to us how that's formed and how it's progressed over the years. Yep. So uh, it all started basically where uh, we had a group of guys. Most of my friends that are here. We rented a house and did a reunion. We had had clusters of friendships, and we said we need to build the group bigger. Um, so we sat around one night and came up with ideas and said, what can we do for the program to make it better? Um, and we started with a golf outing. Uh, our very first golf outing was four years ago. We had three teams, and guys got together, and we had a blast. Uh, this Last year during um, COVID, we had 14 guys that came up because no one was doing anything. So it worked out really well. Uh, and then this past summer, we had 18 groups. Uh, so we filled the course. Uh, and I, I'm confident that next year, uh, we'll have a little more support from the fans, I mean, the parents, and uh, also alum. And uh, we'll solve the course for sure. So. so how does the Gridiron Club really connect with the team? How do they support the team right now? Yeah, so um, what we look to try to do is a couple different things. Um, with the help of the athletic department, we started a LinkedIn page so that the LinkedIn page can help um, the kids as they graduate and move and try to find jobs and connect and network. Uh, but in addition to that, we try to raise money for the program, whether it's films or helmets or equipment or um, anything they would need. Um, we progressed, we have some really good ideas going forward. But in addition to that, we also give back to the program. So as you see, we have a beautiful turf field now and it used to be called Carrier Field, but now that there's multiple sports, it can't be called Carrier Field anymore. So what the group did this year is we got behind a fundraiser to raise uh, money for a statue. And we're pretty close to having that completed. So next fall, the statue will be uh, unveiled at a home game and it'll be of Charlie Courier. Um, so that's a, that's a big, big win for us. So we do certain things like that. Um, we also get involved with fundraising for alumni. Like one of our alumni has ALS. So we've tried to support that program as well. Leo Cooney, if you're out there, Leo, stay strong, brother. Um, so yeah, we do a lot of different things. Moving forward, we'd like to try to do more. Um, I had a teammate last year that told me he's not a golfer, uh, but he'll never miss the golf outing because it's an event. So what we'd like to try to do is get more people involved um, and from that do other events. Um, we'd like to do a Vegas night possibly. Um, we'd like to do uh, some sort of other fundraising. I know we've done comedy nights in the past and those type of things. And you know, basically the thought process is how much money can we raise as a group can we give it to the program? Can we possibly fund a, uh, a grad assistant position? You know, there's all rules with the NCAA, what we can and can't do, but you know, certainly that's what we want to contribute to ultimately. And it's been fantastic so far in the early years of the Gridiron Club, how much they have supported the team. Today, another milestone recognizing 50 years of varsity football here at Plymouth State, a yep. former center here. What does that mean to you hearing 50 years of varsity football and the legacy in those 50 yeah. years. Yeah, so I've said this before, Plymouth is such a special place for me. Um, you know, I grew up in New Jersey and uh, came up here with my dad and basically it was, as soon as I you know, drove on campus, I knew it was the place that I wanted to be. Um, so for me, it's amazing that it, the program has been around for 50 years. And there's a, a dear friend of mine, John Clark, uh, he got me up on the history part. It was actually started in 1968 uh, as a club sport by a gentleman named Jason Holder and I think his name was Kilborn. I apologize if I don't have that right. Um, but they basically played on DNM Field, which was the old softball field uh, up there. And they had uh, one game the very first year was at homecoming. They had a, a black team and a white team, and that's how they did it. They basically borrowed equipment. They, they borrowed uniforms to try to you know, support the program. They got it going. It was awesome. Uh, and then Alan Wool will be here this afternoon. He and I will be handing the coin toss, uh, handing the coin to the referees for the coin toss. And he scored the very first uh, touchdown ever at Plymouth State. It was a 95-yard kickoff. So Which he, is still tied as a record it today. Is, it is a record today. Um, and what was really cool about it is he and I connected earlier this week, and we talked about that first year. And he told me about how um, you know their, their trip to Acadia to play a team in Canada and they didn't have any money. No one told him that they needed to bring money for food. So he told me this story about how he had a dollar twenty-five in his pocket, and he put it in a slot machine, and from that he was able to buy his whole meal. <laughs> so I mean, 
I said, you know, that kind of sounds similar. Talk about history. I go, when I was a lineman here, we would all stand at the end of the line. So when the running backs and the receivers would all go first, we'd ask them for their change so that when we got to dinner, we could get something more, you know? So, but no, the history side is really awesome. Um, the really cool thing is that the program itself has had so much success mm -hmm. in the early on in the 80s. And, you know, um, we're going to talk about the Navy trophy in a little bit, but all of that just means like there's so much rich tradition here it's such a fantastic place for somebody that wants to come up breathe the beautiful clean air and play football get a great education from a great school um, it's a special place and ironically today is actually the 500th game in program history and we didn't know that when we played yeah this. you beat me right to that one so. for sure Talking about the the trophy, the Navy trophy, the replica, the now defunct NEFC New England yep. Football Conference, you were part of a lot of championships and a lot of history. Yep. Talk to us what that replica means and having it back home. Yeah. So um, in 1990, I was a senior, and in 1989, we unfortunately lost it. So a lot of my mentors were like, "This is not good." <laughs> and you know, you felt like you felt bad. Honestly, you felt bad about there was a deep sense of sorrow because we were the first class not to win it. They won it like seven years straight. But what it did is it built a, um, a little desire stronger to want to win it back. And we won it back in, in 1990, my senior year. And it was so special. And, you know, when my son started playing football, he was at Endicott and they played in that league, uh, but it folded. And so John Clark and I reached out and said, where's the trophy? And they're like, we don't know. And it disappeared. And when you were here, the Navy trophy was so special because it was just such a proud accomplishment and you never wanted to let it go. And we won it back in 1990. And it was like, I'll never forget, you know, my, my teammates, we all gathered down the end of the, the corner of the field there. And, and they didn't want to leave that night because we won it back. And, you know, our coach, Lou, I'm sure we'll talk about Lou, mm -hmm. um, was so proud of us to win that back. And it was such a great moment for the entire team. And he made it known for the seniors, you know, that that, that was there. So we couldn't find the trophy. Um, we, like I said, done some fundraising things over the years. And uh, so what we did this year is we said, hey, let's build the trophy. So we, we built a replica, which is pretty darn close, um, except for there was a couple of eagles on the base that were broken. We didn't break those yet. Um, <laughs> but basically, we got an emblem. Mike Currier gave me an emblem uh, from a plaque. We put it on the trophy. It's about three feet tall, and we'll present that at, at halftime. And, and our thought is, what a great way, what a great piece to talk about the history of Plymouth State, to have that on, on board in the Athletic Center so when recruits come up, they can see that this is a very rich program when it comes to tradition and, and history and success. So that's, that's where we got that going. You mentioned, Lou, someone I am very or was very close yep. with. We lost him a few weeks ago. What did he mean to you, not only as a coach, but as a person in developing you as a student, but also a football player? Yeah. So I said this a couple of years ago. I was able to speak at a football banquet. And, uh, you know, my I'm indebted to Lou forever. Um, so I was one of those guys that came up here and, you know, started having a good time my freshman year and wasn't the best student, got in with the wrong crowd. Um, and Lou sat me down, you know, at the end of uh, at the end of the first semester when everybody came back second semester. And he said, where's so and so and so and so all the guys you were hanging out with. And I said, well, they didn't come back. And he's like, yeah, there's a reason for that. So, you know, it was really the, the kick in the ass kind of that I needed to say, hey, you know, how much do you really love football and want to be a part of this program? So I had to work really hard in the classroom and, you know, in uh, in in the practices and the you know practices that we had uh, in the winter, weight room, stuff like that. And uh, I did get invited back. And you know, really, I took that moment as I owed something to Lou. And I worked really hard in the classroom. Several times I you know, got the academic uh, award, which is a big thing. I mean, they really made you know, those players that did uh, 3.0 or above GPA, got a plaque, just as important as any other award. Um, so it was a big thing, but Lou was awesome. He was just a great guy. Um, he's the kind of guy that would give his shirt off the back, off his back to you. And the most important thing is he truly cared about uh, all of us as a man. And uh, I watched a video from my senior year highlight the other day, and I said this to Jen. I said, uh, in that, Lou said, don't forget two things. Don't forget the fun you had and the camaraderie you built. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, a couple years ago when I decided, hey, I, I need to really get back to the program and get more involved. The camaraderie is the biggest thing. I don't think, you know, there's a stronger group of players. And if there are, I'd love to see them. So the younger <laughs> guys come out because we'd like to have you part of the group. 
But I don't honestly think there's a stronger group of players than, you know, when I played, which was 87 to 90. And certainly, you know, Dave Poulin and his guys in the early 80s um, that played with Joe Dudek, um, they have great relationships as well. So a lot of that goes to Lou because Lou is our coach. Lou brought us all together. And so I, I really give, you know, praise up to Lou. I mean, he's probably watching over us today and, you know, he'll always be a part of Plymouth State. Um, he loved the program so much. He loved it here. And, uh, you know, he's, he was just a great guy and he helped, you know, shape me and, and, you know, didn't notice at the time because I was just a, you know, teenager. But I mean, the things that he contributed, you find to realize, you know, the camaraderie, the adversity you make it through, all those things I owe to Lou. So great guy. As you get ready to wrap up, we're getting ready for kickoff. How can people get involved and contact you or the rest of the members of the Gridiron Club to be a part of this growing tradition? Yeah. So um, on the web page, there's a, there's a link that you can click on uh, to, uh, to the Gridiron Group so you can make a donation. Um, all of the alumni are, uh, and all the uh, people in the offices uh, that work for the alumni group and the alumni offices like John Scheiman, they have all our contact information. If you're interested in getting involved, just ask somebody at the college. Um, we really need some help to, to build. Like I said, the golf outing has kind of been my little baby and I've got some help, but we want to do other events. And there's other things we could do there because we have you know, aspirations and goals you know, to try to fund coaches and, or GAs and you know, things that some of the other premier programs around you know, upstate New York and, and other parts of New England do. Um, we've got a great facility here. We've got all the assets. We just want to help support it. So um, the website's the, big, the biggest part. Uh, if you click on that, or you can always, you know, email me at tman58 at comcast.net, um, and uh, we'll make sure you get involved. But we've gotten a good group, you know, from the younger guys this year. They've gotten more involved. Uh, from the team that played actually at the 40th reunion, uh, we got in touch with those guys. So, I mean, hope some of those will be up earlier today. And, you know, it's just a great event. We're, we're happy that, you know, that we started something six years ago. In fact, I'll talk one more thing about the, the tailgating, right? So um, Matt Chizokas and I came up years ago, and we, we sat down, and we're like, where is the tailgating? Where is everybody? And it was all across the street behind the hockey. We're like, we need to make that you know, point here. So thank you, Kim, for giving me that one opportunity. She set us up on the hill over there, and um, I think we had 20 people at the very first tailgate. Um, this past homecoming we were here, they sold 250 spots. I mean, that's, that's fantastic. I mean, we raised $10,000 just by using the fields. So... Um, there's lots of ways that we can help this program grow. That's just one of them. But um, Gridiron Club, go to the Panther football website, and uh, you can click on links. And if you have any questions at all or can't find it, ask somebody in the alumni offices. They'll point you in our direction. Tony, so. as always, thank you for your time. Thank you for all the support for the football program, the Gridiron Club, and enjoy the game today. Yeah, thank you, Dan. Thanks for everything you do, man. You've brought a new message to this group, too. So. Thank you. Yeah, we love what you do on the game. Appreciate it. All right, buddy.